yeah, first of all, um, I wanted to say thank you because uh, you're making uh, this happen. Because I didn't know uh, one day ago that I'm going to be uh, here at WordCamp Nijmegen on stage. So thank you, first of all, for voting for my talk. Um, it is particularly close to my heart. So I am going to talk today about how you can turn rejection into an opportunity for personal growth. And yeah, let's start. So some words about me. Uh, my name is Carol and I am currently living in Germany. I am originally from a small country called Luxembourg. You might know it. I'm 37 years old. I am the uh, WordPress community manager for Plask. And I'm a WordCamp organizer myself, and I sometimes call myself a WordPress community junkie. I'm very passionate about this community. And topics I specifically care for are diversity, inclusion, mental health, and awareness for these topics in general. So, uh, the short story of my crazy ride in the WordPress community, uh, if you want to hear the long story, there might be some talks available at WordPress TV because I was sharing about this uh, community that inspired me to change my life um, at a few WordCamps before. So, um, I actually got involved into this community more or less uh, as a plus one because I am married to a WordPress developer and I didn't know what WordPress was two years ago. And uh, since then I had a crazy <coughs> ride. I, um, I uh, visited my first WordCamp, uh, which was WordCamp Europe in Vienna 2016. And then I quickly became a WordCamp volunteer, a speaker, an MC, an organizer, and I completely changed my life and I built a better life thanks to the community who inspired me and showed me ways to, um, to do so. So, um, more or less a year ago, I found, uh, or let's say Plesk found me, so they gave me the chance to um, continue to do what I love, being around the community, visit WordCamps uh, as their WordPress uh, community ambassador. And I am very aware that I'm in a privileged situation because I am allowed to spend a considerable amount of my work time to contribute to this project. And uh, I couldn't be happier about that. So um, this was only in the past two years and sometimes things went so fast that I literally overtook myself and I wasn't able to follow what's happening with me and what's going on around me. And there are still a lot of doubts. I have uh, doubts and insecurities and even fears I have to deal with. So, like for example, being on stage and uh, my computer doesn't do what I want to do. <laughs> this is interesting. In a month, doesn't work. Yeah, that's a problem. So let me just check what's going on here. I lost connection. So, another fear I have to deal with. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, since two years, I am wondering how can I find my place in an IT community, in an IT community as a non-technical female person. So, um, this, despite of all the goodwill and the sympathy and the empathy and the support I get from this community, I sometimes struggle with uh, imposter syndrome. So. Does everybody in this room know what imposter syndrome is? And my next question would be, who of you is struggling with imposter syndrome? Yes, that's pretty much what I expected. So um, what's, what's to stop me from finding my place in this community? One, one answer is imposter syndrome. I sometimes feel like a fraud. And I have a very nice example for this, a funny one, because we are in the Netherlands again, so I'm going to share this with you. Last year at WordCamp Utrecht, I attended a talk by uh, Marike van der Racht about SEO. And, and sometimes I feel that bad way being a fraud that I didn't even dare to attend uh, a session because somebody might find out I'm not a technical person. So um, I attended her talk and um, I was uh, able to understand everything and I learned and it was interesting and I was very happy. And then the lead organizer came back on stage and said, so, we are finished now for today, and now it's time for Borrelt. And 
there was a completely random person sitting next to me and she said, oh, do you like Borals? And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm not a technical person. <laughs> and everybody around was just laughing like you did. And then I was like, oh, Borals. Yes, I know what Borals are. So does anybody don't know what Borals are? I think everybody knows from the Netherlands. So Borals are like drinks and small snacks, which you are having like in the early evening. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna find out very soon because I think we're gonna have bubbles today. You're not technical either, right? Yeah, <laughs> you're not a technical person. <laughs> so, so that that's how sometimes imposter syndrome can uh, 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 can make itself uh, seen in a very funny way. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of insecurity going with it. Like, am I good enough? And also, do I deserve what I have? Uh, and sometimes I got even told that I don't deserve what I have, even inside in this community, which is actually not very helpful, but hey, we are all human beings. So also I am totally out of my comfort zone as not being a technical person. And I am pretty open about um, when it comes to mental health issues I have to deal with myself. So uh, in the other talk I was talking ab about before, I, I openly share that I uh, struggle with depressions for more or less like two decades, and sometimes there are good periods in my life, and sometimes there are uh, depressive episodes which are harder to deal with. So and all these are things that, um, um, yeah, that, that make me uh, ask uh, and wonder about the question, how can I find uh, my place? And everything in the end leads to the overarching question, to the overarching fear um, of getting rejected. So this is the thing that I, that I, I think I, I'm most afraid of. Besides insecurities and uh, doubts I have to deal with, I might have also some skills and qualities, which uh, I am also aware, so at least most of the time. Uh, so I think that I'm uh, supportive uh, and empowering towards uh, the people around me, at least that's what I try to be. Um, I have, um, I think that when I'm doing something, um, it is because I am passionate about, so, um, I, my, my, my passion and drive uh, is like very strong when I'm accepting to be part of a project. I am a high performer, so sometimes I don't even care about my own mental health when it comes to performance. But um, if there is that has to get done, I make it get done. What? No, 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 God of God. Stop, stop, stop. Uh, yeah, stop. Thank you. That, yeah, you know, I'm not a native English speaker, that's why sometimes I might confuse words. So uh, also I think I have uh, strong um, organizing and leading skills and I have values I care for and um, which I speak up for and um, uh, I will never stop speaking up about uh, uh, the values that are important to me when I think that they are not considered or respected. So very recently I had to deal with my biggest fear. Um, after having put a lot of energy and passion and effort into the organization of WordCamp Europe uh, this year in Belgrade, I applied to become an organizer again for next year and I got rejected. Um, I applied with uh, the suggestion to uh, create an awareness team because it's an event that uh, hosts more than 2,000 people at the moment. and. Uh, even if we are in a community that particularly cares uh, for values like inclusion, equality, diversity, accessibility, and everything else that is bound to the code of conduct, there are still things that we can improve inside and outside the organizing team. So um, this project got a lot of positive feedback, and um, in the end, the global lead organizer decided not to proceed with the idea, which is, in my opinion, the wrong decision, but still it is a decision that a global organizer has the right to take. So it is something uh, I and all the people involved have to deal with. The big problem about this was that the communication was quite poor. Or let's say the way I got notified about me being rejected as an organizer was in a very unfortunate manner. But I'm not going to go into details because it's not a topic about it's not a topic of this talk. But I am pretty open about it. So if you want to learn more, uh, you can just ping me later. Um, what was important is that I had to find out about the reasons. So um, getting rejected is one thing, but not knowing why is horrible, at least to me. So I had a hard time to find out what the reasons are. And um, then I managed to um, have a call 
with, uh, with the people who actually rejected me. And I got told that um, I am very passionate about what I do and that I deliver excellent results, but uh, all this might make other people around me feel uncomfortable. And so that could be a problem and that I would not be the best fit for a team or for that team in particular. So I don't know if there are other reasons and I don't want to judge about that, but this is what I got told and this is what I had to work with. So I decided to work on what I got told. Um, but before, it ended up with a mental breakdown, which was not uh, so funny. Um, but um, because of all the things I told you before, you might understand that the um, rejection itself and also the reason that I got told, I, had some time, uh, I needed some time to digest it. So I um, was thinking a lot about the reasons that I got told. And I found out that my attitude, my behavior, my performance might indeed be problematic for volunteer-driven projects. So, as I told you before, I'm in a privileged situation, so I can absolutely, I am, I am, I am able to co to contribute considerable amount, considerable amount of my work time into WordCamp organization or into other WordPress-related projects. And I am who I am, so that means that I have some expectations about my own performance. And yes, that can make other people around feel uncomfortable. Um, so what can I learn here? I started um, asking myself, what are my overarching goals? Is there something uh, in, 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 in this project or in the idea I pitched or related in any way that is so important to me that I would consider changing my attitude, changing my behavior, changing my expectations for my own performance. And if yes, that it is about time to adapt. Because uh, this is totally unrelated of the, night, of, the, of, the, of the naughty question about right or wrong, or if the reasons are right or wrong. If there's no overarching goal, and the result is that you're getting rejected in being part of that project, it is kind of bound to um, my own behavior. So if I want to achieve that goal, I have to adapt my behavior. And if not, I need to adapt my goals. Um, another thing I was uh, thinking about a lot is, are there other projects or roles inside projects that would fit more the skills that I have to offer, the attitude that I have, and this can be inside or outside this community. So this is another way to deal with it. And yes, there are. And the last reason why I would like to, or why I would even consider to change my own behavior, my attitude about this thing uh, would be for my own mental health. Because, um, of all the because of all the insecurities I have to deal with, I think that I am tending to think that I have to deliver more than excellent results to just to hide that I have to deal with these insecurities and that somebody else might find out. So that might be indeed something that leads to an overachieving person. So despite, um, so now I need to take my computer because I want to read that. So despite of uh, all the things I can learn here and which I am glad to learn here, there is a lot in the message I got which I'm not okay with because, yeah, I think it's kind of dubious and disputable because I literally got told stop being awesome. So two um, days after my rejection, I wrote a manifesto and it helped me so much to get some things out of my system. And I want to share it with you because I think it's a strong message. And I am pretty convinced that other people in this room had to deal with rejections before, before even I did. So, what is not about me? I will not take the responsibility for other people's insecurities, lack of time, energy, or passion for a project. This is about them and not about me. I will not lower my drive or what I expect of my own performance because other people cannot keep up or follow. This is also about them and not about me. I do apologize sincerely and from the bottom of my heart if I have actively put pressure on teammates or colleagues for no reason. I do not apologize for being efficient, reaching individual goals and goals set for the team, delivering excellent results and managing to respect deadlines. 
if this might make teammates feel bad about their own performance, again, this is about them and not about me. I will never apologize for being more passionate about what I do than other people are, because I stopped doing things that I'm not passionate about for a good reason. And there's no such thing as being too passionate about what you do. But yes, there are teams you will fit in with this attitude and teams you won't fit in. If my attitude makes me a bad fit for a team, then the best scenario, for myself in particular, is not to be part of it. And I refuse to accept negative feedback about my performance or attitude after a long time project where not having heard one single word of constructive criticism in all that time or at the project's end. And I will not stop speaking up and setting boundaries if this is necessary to make me feel safe and standing up for the moral values that are important to me. And last but not least and most important, I will not be suppressed to make others feel better. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes. Um, um, also, also, after a lot of conversations I had um, in the last two weeks, I truly wonder by now if I would have been told the exact same reasons if I was not a woman, but a man. Think about it. So, um, let's come back to the more <laughs> positive stuff. Uh, I managed to set my focus um, again in the right direction. So I put you a quote here. You only grow by coming to the end of something and by beginning something else. Um, I found out that, so I, 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 unfortunately, I cannot tell you that there is a way that rejection doesn't feel terrible at first moment, because I think it feels always terrible. But I found out, I survived. I survived. This was my biggest fear, and I'm still here. And I'm here on stage sharing that with you, so that's cool. I am still here. And it enabled me to focus on what is important and on what I have already achieved. During that crazy ride I had in this community, I always felt like, um, yeah, it, it has to go in the exact same uh, um, tempo, speed, thank you, in the exact same speed, and uh, I always was looking for what is the next possible bigger step. Um, so I didn't see that um, there is actually no reason for that, because I have achieved already so much, and I have found friends in this community, I have an amazing job, I have a certain kind of visibility and outreach, and um, so what is that? What is there that I would have to prove? And also, I asked myself why it is important for me to be part of the organizer team, uh, of the of the, w, of the WordCamp Europe organizer team. I like organizing WordCamps. Yes, it is. Is it important? Not sure. Uh, being part of that particular team is actually not important to me because of. Every, of literally everything I told you like one minute before. I have already achieved so much, which other people, for a reason, uh, try to get to become part of that team because they want to increase their visibility, they want to increase their outreach. They might want to have different uh, 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 professional uh, uh, job opportunities, uh, or they, they might want to have one at all, or they might want to change uh, uh, what they are doing at the moment. So I have that already. I'm not in need. Um, and if I want to continue to organize uh, awesome events, I don't need WordCamp Europe either. I can do it on a smaller scale. I can do that uh, uh, with other teams. I can even uh, uh, go and find uh, uh, or set up a team where I'm a better fit for. So uh, there's absolutely no reason why I have to be on that specific team, on that particular team. So I have what I have actually because I am who I am. And I'm good enough, so I don't see, sorry, but I don't see anything uh, or any reason why I would want to change who I am. Um, 
the good thing is also I have so I have I have less stress now, so I can look forward to the next WordCamp Europe and just be there with the with the team that's going to to send me over there, have fun, meet all the lovely people that I want to see without having to run around uh, 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 like a fool and work all day. So this is not the worst situation that you can have at a WordCamp, right? <laughs> Ask the organizers inside here. <laughs> they know. <laughs> <laughs> this is all That's life. <laughs> so, and also, I found um, uh, I found out that there are new project uh, opportunities on the on the horizon. So I have ideas in my head, and I have also already other projects which I'm working on, and which I'm particularly looking forward. And for example, speaking here at the moment is also something I didn't I, I didn't want to speak this year. I thought, like, well, what do I have to share? Thank you. I have something to share. So. <laughs> Coming back to the uh, question I, uh, uh, I was wondering about initially, um, I found out in the, in the past two or three weeks where when I, when I had to deal with this rejection, and in the beginning I thought, oh my god, the community hates me, this is the end of the world. I found out that there are so many people around who are actively supporting me, who give me amazing feedback, who, who helped me in a considerable considerable amount to reset my focus into the direct into the direct into the right direction uh, and i'm so thankful and grateful for that um, i got honest and valuable feedback about myself about projects i am involved in and i had so many inspiring conversations that i cannot even count them and there were even people standing up for me and, and like, hey, I'm going to fight for you. And there were also people encouraging me to give this talk. And only by facing my biggest fear, I found out I have already found my place inside this community. <laughs> so... What can you all do to deal, <laughs> to, to better deal with rejections in the future? Yeah, first advice, try to find out about the reasons. I am totally aware that it's not always possible because there might be people who are not telling you anything about the reasons they reject you. But try to find out and try harder to find out. And when if, and if it's not going, uh, if, if you're not going to find out anything, then unfortunately there will be no way to find out. But if you manage to get some answers about why you got rejected, there is always something you can learn of. And you have to make the difference about what is about you and what can you learn from it and what is not about you. Because what is not about you is, well, not about you. And try to ask yourself, why is this particular project, relationship, uh, partnership, uh, 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 um, business opportunity, why is it so important to you? And if it is important to you, what is the overarching goal? If it's not important to you, it's great because you have not been involved into any project or relationship that is not worth your time. If it is important to you, what is the overarching goal? And if you found out about the overarching goal, adapt or set new goals. I can promise you there's always a good outcome about, any re about every rejection because everything happens for a reason, but only if we are willing to give it a reason. And last but not least, and most importantly, speak about rejection and how you feel because you're going you're gonna to find out there are a lot of people around you who experienced similar situations and who are going to be able to support you, who are going to be able to give you honest feedback, which will allow you to go on an introspective uh, a journey and make the best of it. You are not alone, and this even hashtag, I discovered that two days after the rejection by coincidence, which is share your rejections. So, I am not 100% sure yet about what uh, is going to be the final outcome for me for having been uh, a part of the organizer team of WordCamp Europe this year. But I can tell you that I'm going to make something good out of it. And WordCamp Europe has always been a turning point for me. In 2016, it was the first WordCamp I ever visited. In 2017, Plask found me. And in 2018, I had a blast of a time during the organization. And next year, I'm looking already forward to it, 
I'm going to be an attendee and enjoy it as much as I can. And I survived. I am still here. I'm going to be stronger than ever because I found my inner lion. And I thank you so much for listening to me. <laughs> And speaker notes are really helpful when you have them. <laughs> well, I was going to say give her a big round of applause, but you already did it. Yeah, we can do it.